Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the F-14 Tomcat from Skymaster. Whew, what a build. Anyways, stay tuned and we'll get back in to this amazing tail section of this aircraft. All right guys, last video we got the operational tail hook completed and we got the wiring done for the verticals on the rear of the plane. So next thing we need to do is we need to start wrapping up all of the wiring in the back end. So we've got our elevator wires to run, uh, we've got the operational tail hook wire to run and uh, I think that's everything. Oh, and the... Uh, the afterburner lights, those need to be run forward as well too. So the importance of all of that stuff is basically all of that needs to be run forward, mounted, heat proofed, all that kind of stuff dealt with properly before the tail section can be done. So the pipes and all that kind of stuff. So that's the next big focus. Pretty simple stuff. I'll show you guys as much detail as I think uh, you would like to see, but uh, yeah, basically we're just running the wires forward and that's the next big step. So let's hop into this build. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and let's get into the next steps on this aircraft. All right, so in sorting out the back end here, I'm just taking a look at the air tanks and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run four of the air tanks across the forward section right here. So um, I could put them back further, but the problem is that then you've got air lines exposed to possibly the heat. And uh, I think there's more room the further forward we get. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of a look at that, but Either way, wherever we put the air tanks, we're gonna put a heat shield on the side there and we're gonna stick that to the side of the fuselage to basically protect those air tanks and the air lines from the heat coming down the pipe. So again, when you're organizing an area like this on the plane, you kind of have to think about all the different systems that are working together and how they're gonna interfere with each other. So that's what's going through my head right now. So as I think about that more, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the elevator servo wire extension uh, made up and run forward. Now, one of the things with this extension is we wanna make sure that we bundle this wire together. So if we ever have to change the servo, the connector is right here. Okay, we don't wanna put the servo connection on here and use the servo uh, lead that's coming off the servo as part of your length going forward because then it's major surgery if you have to take this servo out because you're, you may have the servo mounted here and the line goes up and it's up here somewhere and then just fishing that, that back out is a disaster. So I usually uh, try and do that in all situations. So I'm gonna get those servo leads done up first and then we'll start on routing wires. All right guys, so here is the elevator or horizontal stab uh, connections. So I just use heat shrink around that. And then we've got a couple different options for bundling up this wire. I'll show you what I'm gonna use here. What I'm actually gonna use is a piece of heat shrink tubing that's gonna go over the wire and we're gonna zigzag the wire through the heat shrink tubing. Now I'll show you what size heat shrink tubing that I use for these type of scenarios. So for the servo connector, I buy rolls from our Princess Auto. I think down in the US it is Harbor Freight. Uh, but 3 8 uh, heat shrink tubing is what I use for the servo connections. And then half inch shrink tube is too big for the servo connections, but it works for other things like bundling up the wire like I just mentioned. So what we'll do is we'll run that half inch now over top of the servo line. This is gonna be a little bit tight, but uh, then we'll just zigzag it through, the, through the, uh, the heat shrink tubing and that'll be a nice way to bundle that wire. 
And uh, if this, again, as I've, as I've talked about, if the servo does ever need to get changed, uh, it'll be uh, fairly simple just to cut the heat shrink and, uh, and get at the connector and everything, so. We've bundled up the wire there in the heat shrink tubing. Of course, this is a little bit hard to show you now because it's tight. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tuck that on the other side of that former and probably just use a bit of CA or shoe goop to hold that down. And uh, that's gonna allow that to stay put. And then of course, if uh, you ever need to pull that servo out, there's gonna be enough slack in the system that will allow that little bundle to move towards the servo and you'll have access to all of the different connecting pieces there for the uh, horizontal stab servos. So, Okay guys, so we figured out uh, the tanks and what I'm doing with the tanks, but first step what we need to do is get these things uh, glued together. So what we're gonna do is you can use silicone for this, you can use, you know, shoe goop, uh, E6000, which is the same stuff as shoe goop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these tanks lined up and then we'll just take our shoe goop and put a little bit on the front and back of these tanks. And this is just gonna glue these tanks together to make them one unit like that. Okay, and then when we actually put these tanks in place in the aircraft, we'll use silicone because if you ever need to get that out, all you need to do is, uh, in this case, you just reach in there, maybe take an X-Acto blade and just slice underneath the tanks and the tanks would come out if they ever need to get changed for some reason. But, um, so this is step number one of figuring these tanks out and then we're gonna pair them together to one line and then we're gonna mount them in the back of the aircraft. But I just wanted to show you, cause I don't think I've ever shown you how I, how I do this. So anyway, so that is gluing these tanks together. That's step one of the air tanks. All right, so now that we've got all the wires for the control surfaces and everything done in the back end, now it's time to start working on the afterburner lights and tail cones and everything. So what I've done here is I've just gotten the pipe put in place. We've got the tail cone put in place. And you can kind of see here, this would be the standard setup uh, that you'd be shooting for. Um, but it's not what we're gonna be using in this aircraft. So what we're gonna do, as I've talked about, is we're gonna run this pipe in just a little bit more. And the reason for that is, so we've got a little bit larger gap around this pipe. Now I know some of you guys are already saying, you can't do that, you can't have the pipe recessed inside the fiberglass. Yes, you can. It works fine as long as you, uh, do it properly, I guess, is the right way to say it. But uh, no, it, it totally works fine. We're gonna heat uh, treat the, um, the, the tail cones with BVM uh, ceramic paint. And uh, that's how the Skymaster was set up. Totally works fine. Uh, zero issues with that setup. So. so if you're worried, don't worry. So we're gonna run that in probably about half an inch and that's gonna open up a nice gap around that pipe and absolutely gonna glow back there. It's gonna look really cool. So one of the really nice things about these uh, Unilite afterburner rings, yes, they are a pricey unit, but uh, they are absolutely beautiful pieces of work. Now they've got two leads here, and the reason there's two leads is when you look at the controller, now this is the controller just for the afterburner uh, lights, and basically you've got two mains and two boosts. So one of these leads is gonna to come to the main, one of the leads is gonna to come to the boost. These things are mental. If you look at those heat shrinks that are on the back, uh, absolutely beautiful pieces of work. They give off a lot of light. So now we need to figure out how we're gonna get this in those cones. All right, and while we're working on these tail cones, I put one layer of the BVM heat shield in there so you can see all the way down to the base. So that's also gonna help out with, help out with reflecting that light outwards as well too. Um, so anyways, that's one layer. We're gonna put uh, a few more layers on there as well too. All right guys, so we've just plugged in the afterburner light just to do some tests here and see how things are working. Now we've got this set up almost 
to where the stock position of the exhaust is. We're out about a quarter of an inch, so we've got just a small little uh, gap around the pipe there. And you can see with the pipe, the white around the tail, the light is reflecting like crazy. So the cool thing about these lights is from, from uh, Unilite is they are completely adjustable. So I'll show you what happens here as we go through this with the stick. So I'm at the bottom right now and it's simulating just like engine running, right? And I'm up just a blip. Slowly going up, probably about 25% uh, of stick travel. halfway and we'll just go right to full so super cool effect um, I it's gonna be hard for me to position the camera right on but it is really bright like insanely bright and when I look at an angle like this so this is parallel I'm looking at about a 45 degree angle that whole ring is absolutely glowing so that's exactly what I was hoping for that would work uh, because the 14 doesn't have a lot of space around that exhaust pipe and tail cone and everything, but this is gonna work awesome. All right, so we're just trying to figure out how to run the lights for the afterburner light, or the plug-in, sorry. So I think what we're gonna do here is I've marked out this Dean's connector. This is a Dean's micro connector and I stuck it up there, marked it out with fine Sharpie. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this spot out or drill it out, and then we can insert this piece from the back side, and that'll provide us with a plug-in. We need four pins too, because we've got two sets of two leads. This is the side that goes on the afterburner or the exhaust cone side, and that's gonna plug into there. So we just have to make enough room on the removable exhaust side to make all that work. Uh, something else that I just noticed as well is if you look at that one hole right there, if you're building one of these kits, that helps you remember or decide or figure out which exhaust cone goes where because you can't put this exhaust cone on the other side. It doesn't work because that hole doesn't line up. It will work but it's not set up that way because you want those holes to line up. So just keep that in mind if you're building one of these kits. So I'm gonna drill these out with a drill bit. We'll use a little file, a micro file, and square that off and uh, get this thing inserted and check the fit. All right, guys, so we've got this temporarily put in place and I'll talk to you about some of the considerations here with placing this light. So essentially the inside keyhole is the one that is gonna be the most critical. So that's the one right here. So you can see there's not a lot of room between the keyhole and where the pipe fits through the cone opening. So that is the key to getting this set up is you have to get that Unilite as tight as you can to the keyhole but still letting this work. So we've managed to do that. We've cut off our wires to leave a little pigtail there. Uh, that we will probably ev even make that shorter, but that's enough for us to play with right now at this point. So I think we are going to be perfect with this setup. I think it's gonna be really good. What I've done is I've just tacked uh, with medium CA that Unilite in place just to mess around with it, make sure we're happy with it. And then if we're good with that, we're gonna use some Hysol and just uh, tack a bunch of those cooling fins onto the former work. So now that this is figured out, we can start working on our plug-in setup and getting that working with the hole. All right, so we've got the connector all wired up. This is the fuselage end and we kept as much of the existing connectors as we could. So that goes to the, uh, the module, the afterburner module. And then on this side here, we've got the connector all wired up as well. So it's not very excessive as far as the wire length goes, but it should be just enough to work well. So we haven't glued this one yet, but it is ready to go and I think it's gonna look pretty slick, or ready to glue anyways. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the 
other tail cone and basically duplicate exactly what we've done. All right, guys, we got the other tail cone made up. It's this one here. And uh, last step for tonight, before we call it a night, is we're just going to high saw some of the heat sinks on to the plywood former. And that's gonna be our mounting for the, the lights themselves. So right now they're just C8 in a couple spots. But uh, once we put a bit of high saw on uh, every, you know, every third or every fourth one, then uh, shouldn't have any issues and shouldn't go anywhere. All right guys, so we've got the plug installed on the tail cone on both sides here. We've got all the wiring uh, ready to go and I think this is gonna work out awesome. This is the left hand side and it is done. So you can see the amount of wire there just popping out which worked out perfect. Cone is easy to remove so we just twist the cone, pop it out undo the plug, worked out absolutely gorgeously. So love it. So anyways, that, uh, that's how we're gonna be finishing these tail cones and the light setup and everything. So next thing we're working on is getting the wiring run forward. So uh, I'll try and zoom in here for you, but if you look at the ceiling or the top of the plane there, you can see the foil. So what I've done is I've run the wires from the vertical, the right-hand vertical, this one here, basically down, over, and forward. And we're just uh, gluing everything down with uh, the 3M foil tape. And we're gonna do that on the top for the verticals and then these wires as well too. So we're gonna run those forward kind of down that center channel. And I wanna get those all in place uh, basically before we put the air tanks in there. Now the air tanks are going to go right in the center. We're going to silicone them in as I've talked about. So just a whole bunch of organizing in the back end here and getting that wire run forward. Once this wire is run forward, now that we've got everything figured out, then we can start looking at mounting the engines and the tailpipes. All right, guys, so we got a bit of a mix going on here as far as wiring. So the nice thing about the Unilite wires is they're a silicone wire, so very, very temperature resistant. Uh, it resists basically more than anything we'll ever see in a plane unless it's fully engulfed in flames. So what we've done with the Unilite wires is just run them forward. Uh, the elevator wire, which is the one on the bottom of the fuselage here, so I've taped that with foil tape along the bottom and joined it with the tail hook wire coming into that center section. And I've put snakeskin around those ones just to keep it bundled together and just, I guess, more for simplicity for me. And because uh, they're gonna be riding on top of the air tanks and probably just riding around in there. Not 100% 100% sure yet, but that's what we've done. So that's kind of the wiring all cleaned up and organized, and I think it's gonna work out just perfect. Haven't done the other side yet that we've got the cone mounted in. I just wanted to have one firmly mounted, one wide open, and now what we'll do is we'll repeat the exact same wire routing on the other side there and uh, get everything nicely cleaned up. All right guys, so we are all organized or done organizing in the back end of the 14. So next thing we need to do is get the air tanks glued into place and then we'll build our little heat shields for the air tanks. So we've got two sets of two air tanks. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a T fitting in between there, have the tanks paired together to one line, and that line's gonna go forward. So we'll have both pairs of tanks set up this way. And then as we get more forward in the aircraft, then we'll have another T installed where those tanks will go to one system. So gonna get these, uh, these T's installed, and uh, then we'll be ready to silicone the tanks into place. All right, guys, and time for another tip time brought to you by Trusty Bent screwdriver. Previously in my, in my last shop, I had a bunch of stuff mounted on the wall. And one of the things I had mounted on the wall was just a crap load of clamps. This actually isn't all my clamps uh, because in the process of moving, I just put them in drawers. So we've got clamps there, clamps there, clamps there. 
and like I said, missing a bunch of clamps because they're being used in the construction. But clamps are very, very handy. They are a good thing to have. So in a situation like this, I need to, put, to glue these air tanks in here, but I've got all the wires run above the air tanks. Now I don't want to fasten those wires to the roof of the 14 yet. Um, so the easiest way to get these things out of the way is just to use a clamp. So uh, always helpful to have clamps around. Uh, usually if I'm going tool shopping, I'll just buy you know, a couple extra clamps. Uh, you can never have enough sizes, dimensions, styles. So make sure you pick up some clamps because they are extremely helpful. Let's get back to it. All right, so we've got everything run to the roof there or the ceiling or top of the fuselage. Um, I did put some foil tape holding the other uh, wires that aren't foil taped to the, to the roof there. Um, I, I ran those up as well. So now all of our wires are out of the way and that means we are ready to silicone those tanks in. So if we're just checking position, that's kind of where we want them but uh, I want them to be removable in the future if required. So I'm just gonna glue this tank that's closest to the pipe down. So all we're gonna do is put a bead of silicone on there and pop it into place. All right, guys. And we got the one set of air tanks mounted there. Just wanted to give you a decent shot. This is looking through the front section and there's a shot through the back. So uh, that would be pretty easy to get those tanks out when that silicone clear or cures. Uh, essentially what you'd need to do is just take an X-Acto knife, cut through it and uh, the tanks would come out. So pretty simple solution. So what we're gonna do is we're going to mount the tanks on the right hand side of the plane. So that side and the tanks will be mounted and ready to go. So and then just as a thought here, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm not going to put a, a bath or a heat shield all the way down the tanks. I don't think it's necessary at all because the tanks are aluminum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little heat shield uh, just on the front section here. Um, and even then the exhaust cone is gonna be behind those tubes, but want to make sure that those tubes are protected because they're pretty critical. So what we're going to do is just take a piece of thin balsa, uh, line it with uh, the foil tape, and we'll just glue it in place right there, going up and down, and that protects the, uh, the air lines. All right, so there's our two heat shields, and uh, those are just going to be glued into place at the front of the air tanks just to cover those air lines and make sure that uh, the heat doesn't affect them. So I'm just going to glue those into place. All right, guys, it's time to move on to the engine mounting here. Now I'll kind of show you what is happening. So this is the right hand pipe and this is the removable rail and in the right location. So what I'll do is I'm going to uh, just use this one as a, as a reference. So basically what's happening is the fixed engine mount in the aircraft is set back a little bit further than the removable ones. So basically what's happening, if you put the pipe in normal, is it slides all the way into the fixed one, but the removable one, it's not quite catching the hole yet. So that's the way things are situated. And that works out fine because what we wanna do is I actually wanna take that pipe and move it forward about half an inch so what we're going to have to do to that one to make this all work is take this bolt set up here, flip it around so it's coming backwards on the pipe. So essentially it's going to be mounted like this on the fixed rail. So one going forward, one going backwards, and we'll have to play with uh, mounting another bolt maybe on this side on the removable rail so we can uh, get that adjusted to the right spot. So the benefit of, of having it out of the aircraft like this is we can get our spacing all set up between the engine and the exhaust. So that's going to be handy because I can just get this measured out. I can mark on the engine rail, the removable engine rail, uh, where the engine needs to mount and I can get my spacing already preset 
and then we just have to work on up and down spacing with this engine, which hopefully just, just works out easy peasy. But that's kind of the, the theory behind what's happening here. So um, I think step number one, the easiest thing to do is gonna be get this pipe engine combo and everything spaced out properly. And then I'm gonna just thread a nut on here to, uh, to stop it on the, uh, the, the removable engine rail and just to get that stuff kind of all figured out. So that's kind of my theory about what's happening here and uh, I have to do a bit of messing around to make this all work. All right guys, so just pre kind of got everything lined up here with that pipe uh, fitting inside the rails like I was wanting. So it's butted all the way up against the removable rail. Uh, it's fitting backwards into the fixed rail and got the, uh, the cone mounted here. And this is exactly what I was hoping for, for this setup. So we've got about half an inch here between the end of the pipe and the end of the cone. Uh, we've got a nice open gap around the exhaust cone and the pipe and that is just gonna glow. It's gonna be so perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out a couple other things. So first of all, the engine spacing, um, we're gonna need to, number one, cut the engine mount down, which is fine. Uh, we're gonna cut probably in between. Inez, thanks for your help. We're gonna cut in between the two holes there, so probably a line something like that. And the other thing we're gonna to need to do is we're going to need to make some little indents uh, where the engine needs to mount on those rails because uh, it needs to sit something kind of like that on both of those rails. So that's the next thing we have to work on. And also these engines are not installable with everything the way it is right now. I've talked about this already. I can't take those engines and get them in here with the removable rail installed. So those are some, probably the trickiest part of getting this all set up is you can't just put the engine in and install it. You've got to do all this outside the plane. So fortunately now we've got our spacing in relation to the pipe. Uh, set up with the removable rail. Now we can work on getting the engine properly spaced and installed on these rails. So I'll give you guys as much detail as possible here. So I'm gonna take this stuff back out and we'll get, uh, get things set up. Okay, so I think we're really close to being able to put this right engine and pipe combo in. So this is kind of my thinking here and I've already slipped this in once and it works well. So we've got that removable engine rail mounted to the pipe, uh, the spacing's all figured out and everything. And then so all we do is we slip this pipe in, slide it backwards on the fixed rail and then slide the other rail into place. Now one of the Tricky things with all of this is the engine needs to be sitting in the plane, which limits the amount of room that you have to deal with all this stuff. So that's the tricky part. All right, so now that we've got the engine position basically sorted out and everything figured out with mounting. And here's a shot through the back there for you. So the engine position is really nice. Uh, basically a drop in position very nicely centered so that worked out great so now that we've got that figured out essentially what we need to do is get the intake duct figured out now these intake ducts are really really light fiberglass uh, we could leave them out i don't really see a it's not really a big deal to uh for what they do but basically what they how they sit is about there. So you can see that we're too long on the duct. So we're gonna to have to trim these back probably about four inches. And that's gonna bring us really close to the front of this engine here. We just don't want to impede getting this engine in, in and out. So I, my, my goal is to kind of 
hit the halfway point on this tank with that intake duct. So have it kind of come to right about there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these engines, get the intake ducts installed, and then we'll be able to put the engines in for the final time. All right, so the ducts have been installed. I just use CA to install those. So what happens on those ducts is when you get them installed, uh, it's a fairly tight fit. So what happens is the sides of the duct actually bow in quite a bit. So what I did was get the duct installed. I put CA between the duct and the fuselage, sprayed some kicker, and then just used my hand and kind of held it in place until the CA cured. And uh, I mean, I could have left it squished in, but it does, it, it did, kind of squish in about uh, about an inch to two inches. Like it was very, very significant. So anyways, the ducts are now all installed. So what we can do is we can continue and go back and install that engine. All right guys, and just some little forethought here. Basically the fuel inlet is on the underside of the turbine, very limited access. So in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna take a section of four millimeter tubing, hook that up to there before we get this engine installed. Otherwise we're going to be pulling it out one more time. We don't wanna do that. So just gonna plug that in and then we'll get the engine set back in place and then we'll put the pipe attached to the engine rail back in place. So I figured this was also a great time in the video to thank each and every one of you that has donated to the shop build fund. I uh, just want to give a shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for all the donations. Uh, it's been, as I've talked about many times, it's been pretty, uh, pretty cool seeing all the support. So huge heartfelt thank you uh, for those donations. It's going a long way to making the new shop absolutely awesome. Um, and this coming weekend, I think, is our moving day. So we are going to be moving out of our temporary shop where we are right now, barring any unforeseen circumstances. And uh, so it's gonna be a little bit of time getting stuff organized, but man, am I ever looking forward to, uh, to being in my new space. So that's the hardest part is getting that pipe in getting that bolt lined up and then pulling the pipe backwards. Now I'll show you what we do up front. Okay, so we've got the engine sitting down there too low. We've got the rail just sitting here attached to the pipe. So what we're gonna do is we kind of have to do a bit of a combo here where we pull the engine up, get the rail in place and then set the engine down and then we can bolt the rail and engine all up together. All right, and for fastening these engine rails in place, I'm using the new JR servo screws. So they're a metric head, uh, very aggressive threads. It would be like using, I think, a, uh, I think it's called a number six uh, wood screw kind of thing. So anyways, don't use a normal like small servo screw. I don't think that would be enough. All right, so engine rails have been bolted in place. You can see it there. They're done. So engine is sitting where it needs to go and it's pretty simple. It's just sitting in the middle of the rails. I did do that little cutout on the removable rail, the fixed rail, there's no little cutouts on them. But uh, let's take a look from the back. I'll just give you a flashlight shot down there and we are absolutely awesome. That is like as perfect as it gets. So beautiful engine positioning on this setup. All right, so engine is mounted and we are good to go. So basically use some Robertson. I know for you Americans, you may not know what that is, but that's the square head. Uh, Robertson screws, you can get a lot of torque on them and get them out nice and easy. So that's what we've used to mount the engines. I love using wood screws to mount engines because it works great. Uh, it's good for access and they just hold really well. So anyways, engine is mounted. So next thing we're gonna do is put this cone on and see how it all fits. All right guys, and here is a shot of both of these, uh, these Unilite rings uh, working together. So 
Uh, we've got crazy lights here in the sports court. So it is, uh, there's six high bay lights in here. So it is extremely bright in here, like daylight bright. So anyways, uh, this is at idle. So they're just glowing basically. And what I'll do is I'll slowly increase the throttle. So we're at 25%. 50%. About 75% there and 100%. <laughs> These things are awesome. And watch when you, uh, when you throttle down. So I'll throttle down quickly and they just fade out. Super cool. These are absolutely awesome lights. I want to get one for the Huracan actually on the back, uh, the back end because there's so much room back there. But uh, that's going to be the end of this video guys. So we made some great leaps and bounds in this video. Honestly, I have no idea how long this video is going to be. It feels like it's going to be a little bit short compared to my normal videos, but who knows? We'll see. So engines are installed. We are good to go with the back end of this plane. Next big thing that we're working on is we're going to deal with some of the wiring, but we're probably going to save the wiring until we get the wings completed. And that's going to be the next step that we move to is the F-14 wings. Now that is a big job, probably the biggest job of this aircraft uh, so far, I think. And uh, that's that my opinion anyways. So I think that's going to be probably a two-parter on the, uh, the wings, but uh, that's the next big step, I think, for, uh, for moving into something with this aircraft. So good video, accomplished a big step. Getting these engines installed is very important, and it's a big step as well, too. So, so that's it for this video, guys. This weekend, we have moving day coming up. It's going to be great. Uh, moving into the new shop. I hope, fingers crossed, so we can get everything done in time. And uh, that's the big plan for this weekend. So thanks for watching the, uh, the video series. Don't forget to give this video one of these if you liked it. And uh, hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next video.